life. story they don't know a thing about me who are they to judge me see my glory they never see my pain people talk don't fear me i am not afraid of words that cannot break or harm me watch me rise no time for haters on my plate can hold me down no one can hold me down fly like eagle soar like dove i got life i got love i'm gonna i'm gonna read that again no one can hold us down no one can hold us down we fly like eagles and we soar like doves we got life and we've got love. Welcome to Chasing Purpose. Pushing for change together, the power of sisterhood. That is the theme of our show today. But I do believe um, the theme for International Women's Day is e embracing equality. And there's so much that I can say on that because, yes, we've come a long way as it pertains to equality, but we have so much more to go go and i'm just happy to be a part of the change that we all want to see so again welcome to chasing purpose heard on the bridge 99 fm in kingston jamaica i physically am in new york in the irie jam radio studios you're gonna cancel the wall and how it's decorated i keep telling you guys bridge nation that we are celebrating 30 years this year and just this is just some of what we have done behind us some of the plaques that you can see the events and stuff um and i'm absolutely happy to be broadcasting live and this is the meaning of what we do here at the bridge and cg and we, we, we bridge we are the bridge we bridge the gap between um places spaces and really whatever it is that you want to do if you want to get your product into the new york tri-state area into wherever we are in the diaspora okay you know jamaica's winning enough we're everywhere so wherever you want to get your product or your service out or you want to you have a um a charity that you want to get your, your, your the word out to the bridge is the place imagine i can be here in new york on the same turtleneck sleeves them long like i'll i'll have on like finger warmers kai cowl outside but i am broadcasting into jamaica again welcome to chasing purpose and as we talk about international women's day i do want to big up just a few women that have really been the wind beneath my wings my mom miss dawkins wherever you're dead big up yourself my sisters stacy and stephanie my daughters amber and jade oh my gosh you guys are really the wind beneath my wings and i thank you 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 my global village i can't be up and down between jamaica and new york if it wasn't for these people miss p miss rose hides kelly lou thalia green 
oh my gosh what would i do without my global village thank you thank you thank you ladies so so very much the 2023 campaign theme for this year is embracing e equity excuse me i said equality but embracing equity if dominique was in my ear she would have corrected me <laughs> equity refers to fairness impartiality and justice in the distribution of resources opportunities and privileges in the context of society equity refers to the equal treatment of individuals regardless of their background or circumstances so that everyone has an equal chance to succeed and thrive and bridge nation Ari jam fam are we feeling like we're succeeding and thriving we should be i mean yes there are still things that we as women um need to be mean need to have access to which is in the modern day society, I can't believe. But we also have to be the, the change that we want to see. We have to be the, the, the freedom fighters then, right? Um, we are standing on the backs of the, the, the women that came before us. So we now need to take up the baton and run. This is our leg of the race that we need to be running. So do not, and I tell every female that is in my, in my um, realm, take up good space, live boldly, stand on what you believe in. I do believe we have a commercial break to jump to. So we're going to do that when we come back more on Chasing Purpose. To win. Yes, yes, yes. I know JB's just like, oh my gosh, give me a signal. JB, big up yourself. Sean in the building, big up yourself. Everybody in the bridge studio right now, big up yourself. Yes. One of my favorite singers, songstress, Elaine. We do, that song is called Born to Win, and we do have Hearts of Champions here on the bridge, 99 FM, Irie Jam Radio, Chasing Purpose. I am your host, Cynthia Shea, and today the theme of our show is pushing for change together, the power of sisterhood, and while we celebrate women all year round in the radio stations here at the bridge and Irie Jam Radio, we are focusing today on the power of sisterhood and what that looks like yeah that coming together that holding us accountable that holding our hands when we need a, a shoulder to cry on that that phone call just to say hey i see you are you okay that 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 push that extra push that we need when we're feeling down or that celebratory call when it is when we do something amazing you know i i, I have a, a quite a bit of groups that i am in that do just that and i would tell anybody that has um friends or there that are maybe not in a sisterhood group find you a tribe find you a tribe of ladies that are going to celebrate you but also hold you accountable that are going to sit and drink with you but also say all right it's time to get down to business it is so important on this journey of purpose that we are on and as we talk about sisterhood it refers to the relationships between women based on mutual support respect and encouragement that support that respect and that encouragement is very important being able to be seen and heard through your sister friends yeah that the the, the ability to be vulnerable and to share to be open and to be honest to be authentic and use your voice as well is important for sisterhood. It's the bond that forms between women who are united by a common goal. When you find, when you're looking for that tribe, you guys have to be like-minded. The goal has to be that you guys are on the same page. You're looking for someone that has similar traits to you. One, one that is going to, and I'm, I'm big on sitting in rooms or being a part of groups that where I can learn and grow from. As well as I want to hear from the younger groups too. You know, I want to be able to lift up my younger groups and send the elevator back down for my younger, my younger women. When women come together and support each other, they can break down barriers, push for greater equity and inclusivity, inclusivity and make a lasting impact. And isn't that what we're all here for, to make a lasting impact in whatever way, however small or big that is? 
I'm excited in our next hour, we're gonna be talking to Dr. Vicki Johnson and Sharon Webb Richards about that, the power of sisterhood and coming together. Now, my trusty producer, Dominique, back in Jamaica, came up with some benefits of sisterhood and we're gonna go through them. One of the key benefits of sisterhood is the support it provides. Having a network of women who believe in you and have your back can be incredibly empowering, especially when you're facing challenges or pursuing your goals. When women who are part of a supportive sisterhood are more likely to feel confident and secure in their abilities and less likely to give up when faced with obstacles. And let me tell you, I can agree hands down. I have a global village. I live between Jamaica and New York and I have the ability to do that and I feel confident in flying back and forth because of this village this sisterhood that I have within my global village so that is very very that's a very important benefit another important aspect of sisterhood is the sense of community that it provides when women come together and share their experiences they can learn from each other and grow together whether you're discussing your career goals your health and wellness journey or simply sharing your life experiences sisterhood provides a space where women can and connect and support each other in meaningful ways important especially in a professional aspect when you're when you're pursuing those aspirations those goals and those dreams that you're you're gunning towards having a community to share is important Having someone to, having people to say, look, I don't think that this, I'm doing this right. Or maybe I feel that this, or this isn't my zone of, of, of genius. What can I do here? Or how can I, that's very important. Very important. The great Maya Angelou once said, I don't believe an accident of birth makes people sisters or brothers. It makes them siblings gives them mutuality of parentage sisterhood and brotherhood is a condition people have to work at and it's not easy y'all know when women get together we can become all sorts of catty and competitive competitive and all these things but when we find that common thread when we find that that un that unity right when we find when we're able to be our authentic selves without being judged that is where the sisterhood comes in. And it takes work. It's not easy. Now, y'all could ask anybody in my office. I'm a force to be reckoned with. But they know that I, I, I mean the best for each and every one of them. Sisterhood is very, 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 very important. Very important. So how can we work at building and maintaining strong sisterhood relationships? Here are a few tips before we do a further deep dive with our guests, Dr. Vicky and Sharon Webb Richards. And uh, Bridge Nation, Irie Jam fam, all of our shows can be found on our YouTube. So if you ever miss a broadcast or interview that you want to catch up on, you can do that on our Bridge YouTube, Bridge 99 FM, or on our Chasing purpose youtube all you have to go when you go to youtube is chasing purpose um with cinta shay clark or just put in chasing purpose all of our shows are there we have had some amazing amazing shows some amazing women and i said that i was when i was coming up the other day i saw um miss kitty and what a joy she's she's just absolutely amazing shereen anderson who um was on just last week if you did not see her show please go and see her show and see all the gems she dropped crystal tomlinson oh my god if i begin to name names just go to our chasing purpose YouTube, and you'll see all the amazing women that have uh, contrib contributed to the interviews here on Chasing Purpose. All right. So we're talking about tips for building and maintaining strong sisterhood. The first one, be open and authentic. When you're open and authentic with other women, you build trust and create the foundation for a strong relationship. Important, building that trust. Listen actively. Make an effort to really listen when other women are speaking and show that you're interested in what they have to say. Listen actively. Someone said to me that, do I, am, I listen, am I listening to react or am I really listening to hear what the person has to say? Listen actively. Don't over talk. Don't cut off. Listen to hear what people have to say. I'm a work in progress with that part. Offer support. Very important. When other women need help, be there for them. 
Whether she needs a shoulder to cry on or a boost of confidence, you support K. Your support can make a big difference. Support makes a huge difference. Sometimes people just want to share. People just want to be heard. You don't want the advice. They just want to be heard. They just want to release. So just support your sisters. Celebrate each other's successes. Take the time to celebrate each other's achievements and milestones, no matter how big or small. I am in a group. It's called the Schmilly Group. Um, and we're a bunch of professional women, entrepreneurs who um, are just, we're basically supporting each other. When one feels that they've hit a brick wall and they can't go on, you drop, we drop it in the group. When someone is, you know, featured or has a, has a win, we drop it in the group. We have something called um, need, lead, and, ce um, and celebration. So we each um, lead with a, a lead that we need, a need that we need, a lead that we have, and what we're celebrating. And maybe that's something that you guys can adopt in your groups. It's important to celebrate each other and encourage growth. Support each other's growth and development and help each other reach your full potential all these tips are things that i'm sure um we all practice but in a community of sisterhood this is how we foster sisterhood this is how we foster that community that coming together that we all want to see we're not here to be alone we're not birthed to be alone our siblings yeah they're great Right. But you also want persons that are outside that can give you um, unbiased opinions, that can give you um, unbiased advice, I should say, that can support you, that, that listen to you, that offer you that encouragement, that push you when you feel down. There are times where you just don't even want to be bothered with whatever's going on in the world, whether it be personal or professional. But when you have that person or that community behind you rooting and just pushing behind you, you, you just, you just want to go. You want to go. So find that sisterhood and support that sisterhood. There's going to be challenges in anything that we do. There's going to be challenges. We're going to jump to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Vicki Johnson and Sharon Webb Richards around the power of the very thing I am talking about, sisterhood. We'll be right back. Welcome to Chasing Purpose where we nurture faith, set intentions, pursue aspirations, all while we are living boldly. And I am so excited to get to this conversation. Today we have the pleasure of having two exceptional guests. It is truly a privilege to have them both here. I really am excited, guys. Remember to have your journals, your pens, your water, your glass of wine, or tea, whatever it is that you want, But because gems are going to be dropped today. We're talking about the power of sisterhood. Their diverse backgrounds and expertise will bring a wealth of knowledge and insights to our audience on the topic of sisterhood and empowering women. First, we have Dr. Vicki Johnson, a speaker, mentor, author, chaplain, and advocate with over 35 years of experience in music, sports, entertainment, and community service. With their extensive background and expertise, Vicki, Dr. Vicki has empowered thousands of women to invest in their soul wealth. I love that. And find balance in their spiritual, mental, emotional, and relational well-being being. Next, we have Sharon Lady V. Richards, a licensed holistic health coach who is passionate about helping people rediscover their healthy selves. With, their, with her focus on people 35 years and above, Lady B has helped thousands of individuals to eat healthier, think positively, and exercise for a better, healthier life. As the CEO of Anaz Spa Boutique, Lady B is dedicated to empowering and uplifting individuals on their journey to self-discovery. And Lady B is a personal friend and sister friend of mine. Recently, most recently, I was um, a speaker at her conference that she had in um what's that part of long island way out in the way out in the um <laughs> island there i hear i hear her sharon you'll, you'll come and tell us but i am happy and honored to have you both together these two dynamic women will share their insights and perspectives on the importance of sisterhood in empowering women and pushing for change in the society so six back Sit back, relax, and let's be inspired. Dr. Vicky and Sharon, welcome to Chasing Purpose. Thank you so much. Happy to be greetings, here. Greetings. Hi, so Vicky. happy to be Hi. here. So 
Again, um, Bridge Nation, Irie Jam fam, please get your journals, have your pens ready. We are going to have gems dropped. Dr. Vicki Johnson, we're going to start with you. Can you tell us about your background in media, public service, and advocacy, and how it led you to invest in the empowerment of women through soul wealth? Well, thank you again for having me. Can you hear me okay? I can, loud and All clear. right, then want to go into it and like... No, um, you're good. So <laughs> I have been in this space, I'll say for over 40 years, believe it or not. I have a 40 plus career, 40 plus year career in entertainment. I worked at BET for 18 years oh, wow. uh, where I led the Wrap It Up campaign. Oh, yes. Um, I remember that. And also, you know, yeah, I, I just love, got a side note, that commercial for, you know, HIV testing just kind of took me back all the way yes. because I did that okay. for 13 years Wow. Um, on behalf of the network. Been speaking and mentoring women for over 25 years. Actually started my first girls club when I was 10 years old. Oh, wow. So empowering women and girls is really in my heart. And currently I work in the mayor's office in Washington, DC in the office of cable television, film, music, and entertainment where I, I issue film permits. That's my oh, day wow. job. <laughs> oh, we gotta um, talk then, after this, Dr. Vicky. Huh? I said, we gotta talk after this. Oh, definitely. We'd love to. So I issue film permits for the city and I'm a speaker, author of 12 books. And I started Soul Wealth in 2014 out of a passion to want to continue mentoring women in, in the areas of spiritual wellness, mental and emotional wellness. And Soul Wealth actually was inspired out of Third John in scripture where God says, I desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So the premise of the work that I do is that your life can only be as healthy as the state of your emotions, which impacts everything else. So Soul Wealth is... Um, my work is my baby, it's my heart, and my mission has been really to embody soul wealth so that when I meet women, when I encounter women in whatever capacity I am, I can just share what is possible. And I am grateful to be here again as part of this conversation with you and Sharon today. Well, we are absolutely happy and blessed to have you now sharon lady b please tell us about you being a holistic health coach and, and how you help people and help them to bring back their healthy selves greetings everyone love 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 you sin love, love you, you too. nice meeting you <laughs> dr johnson happy to be here and the irie jam family and the bridge family listen I don't know. I just was born to help people sometimes. I can attest to that. Listen, it is just, it is what it is. Whether you sometimes, whether you want it or not, you know, because, you know, people are challenging, but we'll go back to that later. But again, I was born to help people. And sometimes you just have to embrace who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, I love women, even though that we can be the most challenging. And I think because we're just, we just do so much. But um, being a health coach, I was certified in 2012. Um, the main reason I got into the health coaching is because of my daughter, Jasmine. She had severe yes. asthma yes. and I wanted to help her without putting her on meds. So I went mm -hmm. to school and learned all the, the tricks in, of the trade of holistic health care, all the plants, all the things that I could give her. And it helped her tremendously. And she didn't have to um, go on, you know, drugs. Yeah, and that awesome. was my epitome of just starting this whole healthcare, really diving into health, health, health coaching mm -hmm. and just loving on people. So everywhere I'd go, people would sneeze or they'd call off, I'd take this, take that. And I just found myself going into this. My journey was, I started off as a makeup artist, actually. And I also worked for BET. I actually worked on the Cosby show. I don't know if you knew really? that. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh my God, I have some powerhouses on the show. Yay. I, I love that. I did. And I worked for um, BNVH1, long hours, way before Jasmine was born. And, oh my um, goodness, this is awesome. Listen, 
So I knew how to work hard because working on those platforms is 12, 18 hour days. So yeah. I was used to working hard. Yeah. And um, it's just something that who I am, I work hard and I just go in for whatever I do. So I'm that, I'm that person. If I'm there for you, I'm that ride or die. So that's yeah. just how I live my life. Yeah. So women, I'm all in for us because we are the most challenged. We have the most issues. We got a lot of things going on with us that need support. So yeah. that's what started my journey. My journey started just loving on people. Just Vanessa on Williams people. actually that. was one of my clients and she had severe acne. And I wanted to help her. And I just wanted to say that for some reason, because a lot of times we're in a profession that we just do the work. Yeah. But when you realize that you want to do more than the work, then you know that your gift is unique. And then yeah. you just have to jump on it and pursue it. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask I want to ask you both. What are some common barriers to forming a genuine sisterhood in women? And I guess I'll, I'll throw to Dr. Vicky and then Sharon, yeah. you can pick up. Yeah. Well, I want to start by, by quoting um, Yana Van Zandt. There's something mm -hmm. that I learned years ago where it says, I am not my sister's keeper. I am my sister. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we make assumptions about other women when the truth is I am my sister's reflection. Mm -hmm. Like when I came on here, the first thing I did, I looked at Sharon and I said, you are so beautiful. It's so That's nice good. to meet you. And I really meant that. Right. Not only is she radiant, but I could just feel, I could just feel her compassion and her kindness and her love. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to say we as women cannot give away what we don't have. Mm -hmm. If we don't have a healthy sense of self, then it's difficult for us to look at another woman and see ourselves in her mm -hmm. or let me say it this way. We will see all the things in her that we don't like about ourselves, whether they're true or not, because it's a projection. So insecurity is a barrier, um, inferiority complex, mm -hmm. um, imposter syndrome is a barrier because we are not comfortable with who we are. When we are, when we are, it's easy to connect to another woman because when I look at her, I am looking at a reflection of myself yes. and I intentionally, I'm intentional about showing up for other women. As Sharon said, because when a woman looks at me, I want her to see a reflection of her. Mm -hmm. I want her to feel the best. I want her to feel alive. So I'm showing up with the intention to connect with other women. And I'll say here, a lot of times I've heard over the years, the last 20 years or so, you know, I don't do women. All of my friends are men. And I listen without judgment. I ask questions. I don't ask what's wrong with you. My question is what happened to you? Mm. Something mm -hmm. happened to create that mindset, that belief that women don't get along, women don't support each other. We're debunking that myth right now in this yes. conversation yes. as we are showing up and sharing you know, with one another and with your audience. So those are just a few barriers that come to mind immediately for me. For you, Sharon, what are some common barriers in form to forming genuine sister sisterhood in women that we need to be breaking down? I think for me, the first thing we do, I, and, and kudos to you, Dr. Johnson, let me tell you what she said. I can't even top it. Those are all of those things I, I share. I, and, um, but one of the things I want to say is I feel like we prejudge immediately. Oh, yeah, we do. We, we prejudge. Do. Um, we assume the worst almost walking through the door. Like, like as women, we we tend to want to know what's going on before it happens. <laughs> and if we know that too many women is going to be in the space, we immediately put on a game face. Yeah. And it's we and as Dr. Johnson was saying, you know, what's inside of you really? Because what's inside of you is what you're going to project. Yes. That and I really me. believe it starts with self healing. When I tell you I've been on a self healing journey, mm -hmm. like none other since last year. We all need to get there because mm -hmm. there's, we cannot project what's not in, in us. Mm -hmm. The word says um, what's in the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. 
So basically what's in your heart is what's going to come out. So if you're a mean person, nasty person, uh, you know, all those other things that we can say negative, you have to check your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem I have right now, right now, a lot of people glorify the negative. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking in the space and you're like, you have the demeanor, like, don't bother me, don't touch me, I'm all of that. Those are the people who are also hurt. They gravitate to those people. Mm -hmm. And the problem is those people are becoming larger than the people who are actually projecting love. Mm. You know, and, and, and Sharon, Absolutely. I want to I want to talk about I want you to share a personal experience with sisterhood and how it has impacted your life and career. And then I'm going to throw that over to you, Dr. Johnson. Okay. Well, sisterhood for me, one of the one of the things I want to share is, you know, we did the retreat. We've been doing the retreat. Like God has put this retreat on my heart forever. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I shied away from it for, for all the reasons that we're talking about right now. Mm. All the reasons is why I shied away. You know, I didn't feel like enough. I was just, you know, too much. And you got to deal with women and all the things that came with it. But there comes a time where the press is, is, is you can't, you can't run from the press. Mm -hmm. So I launched um, Breathe Again Retreat. And one of the amazing things that came out of this retreat, this retreat is for women. Um, we did it in the Hamptons, the Hamptons um, yes. in October. <laughs> yes. I want to come. Right. Yes. It's so good. It is so good. But let me <laughs> tell you something. I got a prophecy the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share it with you, um, you guys later. You know, sometimes you got to keep your prophecies a little bit, you know, in your circle. But um, this, this retreat is phenomenal. God's hand is on this retreat. Mm -hmm. But one of the main things I noticed with just women to coming together um, is if we're connectors, we, we're connectors. If we can really, um, really push to being connected, really embrace being connected. And my personal experience from being amongst a lot of women and trying to harness that love, that um, respect, that overflow, that cup, all of that, it is a work. Mm -hmm. But if you can really bring women together and show them their worth, mm -hmm. even the women who feel like they have it all. I had a woman who said she had it all, you know, she doesn't even know why she would be here. She she feels like she have, has it all because she had material things. Mm -hmm. But when we touched her heart, she realized it was very empty. Mm -hmm. She needed that cup served to her. And just when you can really discern people, and one of the things I feel very important as women, we have to discern one another. Yes. When you're in the space of somebody, are you looking at them? Mm. Are you in that present? Are you? Am I looking at you, um, Dr. Johnson? Am I looking at you, Sin? Mm. Or am I just in your space? There's mm. a difference. Yes. And when you are looking at somebody, you can help them. Yeah. And you cannot do that before you start looking. And first you gotta look within. And I really love mm -hmm. all the things you said, Dr. Johnson, because we gotta look within. And the work is continuous. And we mess up and we gotta pick ourselves back up and get back on that horse and say, you know what? I didn't I didn't really do right today. I had a bad attitude today. Mm -hmm. How can I fix it? Maybe I need to read one of Dr. Johnson's book. Maybe I need to read, you know, look at, we got to fix it. We can't yeah. just stay in the moment of, I just had a bad day. I know I wasn't cool. I didn't do right today. Fix it. Yeah. And by you fixing it, you can help somebody else. Yeah. yeah but one totally. of the things I just want to say, because I totally missed the, the point that you said, is that what I found in with sisterhood is that we can, um, What's the word I want to say now? We're good networkers. That's mm -hmm. the word. Mm -hmm. We network amazingly. So the retreat, by me introducing a bunch of women together, they became lifetime friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They became life. They found their niche mm -hmm. outside of their own niche. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Who Which is probably important. was toxic. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a whole other <laughs> show. That's a whole other show. Dr. Johnson, right. can you share <laughs> personal experience with sisterhood and how it's impacted your life and career? Oh, not so many. You know, I, I, I will share that sisterhood is inconvenient. Mm. Right? We need sisterhood when it's not convenient. Yeah. We need sisterhood when we have to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know, we need sisterhood the most. We need it the most when we're the most broken. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I'm I'm getting I get, was getting chills listening to you sharing about your retreat because most times when women gather is not about what's on the stage. Frequently it's about who's sitting next to you. Who's right. sitting in front of you? Who's sitting behind you? And to answer your questions, and I, I've gone to so many events, so many events, and my greatest takeaway were the people that I met. Yeah. Huh? Yes. It was the women I met. Yeah. It wasn't who, and not to cast any aspersion on the speakers at all, because they were powerful. They were the magnet to draw me into that space mm -hmm. to meet other women who have absolutely changed my life. Mm -hmm. An example of sisterhood, specifically one that I have in, in right here, I'll share. Um, it was after an event, went outside with another sister friend because I don't believe that we should walk to our cars alone when it's just women, right? Mm -hmm. So we are all walking to our car and cars and this one sister's car wouldn't start. Now, it took maybe three hours for help to come. Oh, wow. Sisterhood to me is not leaving her. Absolutely. Right. right. Absolutely. And I had stuff to do. You know what I did? I picked up the phone and called those things that I had, those people that I had things to do with and or for. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, I'm going to be late or we may, we may have to reschedule, but I am not leaving her. Yeah. And I stayed with her mm -hmm. for like three hours mm -hmm. until a tow truck came because she lived two and a half hours away. away. Wow. So it wasn't like family or friend, you know, it wasn't, it, they could get to her in time, but sisterhood to me is staying there with her. Yeah. And, and, and staying there physically, but also that support that you gave her mentally and emotionally, because I'm sure it was harrowing for her, you know, Absolutely. to live so far away and now the car not working. So it was so much more. Um, and that, and even what you said, Sharon, as far as the, the individual who felt materialistically, she had everything that she needed. She, she didn't understand why she was even there, but to really realize that she was empty inside. And there's a lot of women um, that have a lot of work to do within this space. So going to these conferences and building these sisterhoods and these relationships is so very important. Now, before we continue on, I have to jump to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation right here on Chasing Purpose about sisterhood. We are talking today about the power of sisterhood, and I'm joined by Dr. Vicki Johnson and Sharon Webb Richards, and we're talking about um, sisterhood, as I said, and before we went to break, we were talking about just kind of forming that connection and what that connection looks like or should look like. Um, we, we All three of us have been to conferences, and I think it was Dr. Johnson, you said that, yet yeah, you were pulled in by the speakers, but it was who sat beside you, in front of you, or behind you, that is you, where you really found that, that, that bond, right? And there's something for me in, um, when you go in these spaces and and, you know, you're just like, oh, my God, why am I here? Or how do I how do you approach someone to talk to or or, you know, you have all these guards and walls up when you want to approach someone that you think would should be in your sisterhood and in your community. What are some ways that we can kind of break those walls down and and embrace one ourselves and then put ourselves out there in the spaces to form these these sisterhoods? First, I, I, as you were just talking, I, I was like, what what do I do when I walk into a room? Because mm -hmm. believe it or not, I'm really shy. <laughs> you know, when I'm when I'm speaking or, you know, in my purpose, that's different. But walking in a room, um, 
still to this day, you know, it, it's, it's a little nerve wracking for me. So mm -hmm. I, I center myself, I breathe and then I pray. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I ask God, where should I sit? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. should I sit? I just wow. ask for wisdom. And every time God gives it to me. Yeah. And yeah. I also think it's important. This is so important when it comes to mm -hmm. authentic sisterhood. Don't have an agenda. Hmm. Just be open to connecting. Mm -hmm. Just because. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. because. Don't have an agenda. Like I'm going, you know, and, and I find that those types of connections mm -hmm. are lasting. Yes. yes. They're lasting because mm -hmm. I don't lead with who I am, mm -hmm. what I do, my account. I don't lead with that. Mm -hmm. I lead with maybe a compliment. Mm -hmm. I like your earrings mm -hmm. and I really do, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I love your shoes. Like mm -hmm. I lead with a compliment. I find something that's common, mm -hmm. you know, some commonality or mm -hmm. I give a compliment just to break the ice and start talking and by the end of the day most times i have a new sister yes because mm -hmm. i didn't want anything it was mm -hmm. how can i connect mm -hmm. tell me about you so i'm sharing she just been speaking the sentiment of my heart she's like i see you right and i yeah. think it's that that's what we all want we want to be seen yes mm -hmm. I want to know that you see me and yeah. I want you to know that I see you. Mm -hmm. And then we do the next thing from there. I think mm -hmm. when you enter into spaces or opportunities to connect with other women without an agenda, mm -hmm. I want to come in October just because Sharon described it so beautifully. I was like, Ooh, I need to be there. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know why. I just feel like I want to come. Yeah. Right. It's a beautiful experience. It is. <clears throat> it is. And Sharon, and Sharon, what about you? The first thing I want to say is I come in now into any space to bring something. Mm. I want to bring Sharon. Mm -hmm. Sharon has something to bring to the space. Mm -hmm. I think, especially if you're shy, mm -hmm. because I don't know if I'm shy. Sometimes I'm a little self-conscious about certain things, but I want to call myself shy. Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel a hundred percent for the day mm -hmm. and in my moment, then I'm going to pull back. Mm -hmm. But once I start realizing it's really not about how I look, it's what I'm bringing from my spirit mm -hmm. and my spirit is good. Yeah. <laughs> because my God is good. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And once mm -hmm. you come into a space wanting to give your authentic self mm -hmm. and stop thinking it's about you mm -hmm. and people looking at you, your earrings ain't right, your hair ain't right. Stop taking the focus off of you mm -hmm. and bring in love and bring in what you have. Mm -hmm. What you have could just be your style. Like sin, you have a great style. Mm -hmm. If that's all you have to bring for the day and you bringing it and somebody can say, wow, I love your shoes. Mm -hmm. You brought something to the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we and, have to stop looking at it like how you, we got to look at it differently. I agree with both what you, what, what both of you said, but for some women, it's, it's hard. It's hard because, yeah. you know, we, we tend to carry so much and we're talking about from childhood. We have all these traumas, all these interactions, all these limiting beliefs, what society want, what society wants us to look like or be like or feel like um, it, it's it's hard. So what, what are what are some ad, some advice or tips you would give to someone to show up as their authentic self? Oh, um. I would start with acknowledging the areas where I need to grow. Mm -hmm. And that takes a sense of honesty, mm -hmm. right? A, 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 a space of self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Where do I, what areas do I need to strengthen? And when you identify those things, for me, I say it this way, this is one of the, one of the gifts of reading 
Mm. You know, it's one of the gifts of, I'll say, the internet Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that Mm. technology allows us to connect with women we admire, women who can pour into us Mm. without having to be in their space. I know for a long time after my daughter was born, I dealt with postpartum depression for five years, Mm. five years. It was just a, a bl- black space for me at that time. And my daughter will be 30 this year. Wow. Um, but uh, I got a lot of sustenance online, mm. watching and listening to other women that I admired, mm. even though I was not physically in their space or in a position really to be in their space, mm-hmm. I was able to be poured into. Mm-hmm. So I think it starts with desire because mm-hmm. desire really is an expression of what's possible. Mm-hmm. If it's in you, God put that in you. And and so it's it's an indication of God's intent for your life and God God will provide for wherever he guides you to. Mm-hmm. So I think it the first step would be curiosity, asking questions. Where what areas do I need to strengthen? Mm-hmm. And then you do the next thing. Like each answer guides you to the next step. Mm-hmm. I could break it down to just some simple, simple steps. Mm-hmm. 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 Sharon, your authentic voice, or 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 what? How how would you give tips to our listening audience and finding their authentic voice as it pertains to sisterhood and finding your sisterhood? Um. Being authentic, as simple as it sounds, is very challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have to do the things that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. First thing is you have to realize a lot of people are going walking around being okay with who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you, like um, Dr. Um, Johnson said, if you come to a place where you have a desire to change, Mm -hmm. then you have to pursue it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's some parts of you that you know that that you can improve. You have to face it and you have to sit in it and you have to heal. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we talk about the person is wounded. They need help. They need help. Um, it's one thing to talk about it, but you have to be about it. You mm. really have to sit in that space. Like I'm really a negative person, whatever it is, or I really have childhood wounds that I haven't dealt with Mm -hmm. but you can always say I have childhood wounds but have you dealt with it and what does that mean are you going to seek counsel or you do you want to do something about it because a lot of people are not here and they never did anything about it and they left with gems Mm -hmm. they had gems but they never were able to express it because they weren't able to deal with themselves Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my pursuit, and for me and my people, my tribe and with the God, people who God have aligned me with, is to dig deeper mm-hmm. and to face those issues and then to address them and to sit in them. One of the things I always talk about is um, um, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Mm-hmm. He, wasn't, he wasn't a speaker. He was mm-hmm. a stutterer like Moses. Mm. He stuttered so bad that he had to put his hands behind his back. He couldn't even put his hands on the mic because he would shake the mic so bad. Yeah. But he pressed through that. Mm -hmm. How many of us are willing to press through the fears? Mm. How many? You got to be willing to press through the fears. The Bible says he, God, did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Do you have any of those? How got many power, of us, you got love or a sound mind. How many of us are willing to press through the fears? That's a question that we, we should all sit with. How many of us are willing to press through the fears? Because the fears, they're, they're going to come. This is just life. It's inevitable. The fears are going to come. By pressing through them, very important, Sharon. Thank you. I, I am filled today 
with this conversation and I can't thank both of you enough um, for sharing and being open and honest and being authentic with us and I think that is really where what, what I, my biggest takeaway from today's show is that is that authenticity and being honest and open with ourselves first and then with the women that are in our um, our our networks in our communities that are in our in our tribes where can our listeners and and viewers find you, Dr. Johnson. I'll start with you and then Sharon, I'll throw it to you. Okay, my website is vickyjohnson.com and I'm on all social media at all things Vicky. And Vicky is V I K K I, all things Vicky. On social media, my YouTube is all things Vicky Johnson and my website is vickyjohnson.com. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I've so enjoyed being a guest here with you today. I am I am so honored to have had you. We're going to where I know that we're gonna have you back on the show, Dr. Vicky. I know for sure. Sharon, my darling, where can our listeners find you? Well, I actually um started a new ageist lifestyle. I don't know if you can oh. see it, but I want to show you. Yes, let's see, let's see, let's see. Lifestyle. Ageless lifestyle, honey. It yes, is a mindset. Totally. It is a yes. mindset. It, it really that. is a mindset. Um, so you can find me at Ageist Life, Ageist Living with Sharon dot com. Mm -hmm. And um, Jasmine just wants me to tell everybody that I lost 25 pounds. So <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's a celebration. Look, that's you a celebration. We need to support that. This without saying that. I love that. Hi, um, Jazz. Thank, <laughs> and thank you for sharing that. Um, oh, my. Huh? Go ahead, Sharon. Yes. Yeah, so definitely please check me out. It is a lifestyle. It's a journey. Whether you want to um, lose weight, whether you just want to, you know, eat healthy. I have helped people who have diabetes, hypertension, mm. I have a cancer patient. It's just a healthier lifestyle. and It's collective. So please um, just join me. I'd like to do consult with you, speak with you. Again, it's agentslivingwithsharon.com. And of course, we have our spa with my daughter. That's yes. anazalife.com. Yeah. We started this business because we need to relax. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to relax. We do. <laughs> We're all in our heads all the time, thinking about everything. And we can't take one hour to relax. That one hour, we're trying to feed the dog, feed the kids, even deal with the grown kids. We're trying to help somebody. We don't take the time to relax. We need to find, whether it's going to the spa, I don't care what it is, walk somewhere, you know, play golf. I don't care what you do, just find some time for you. And one of the things that I, that I'd start doing was reverting to back to what I like to do as a child. Mm -hmm. I like to jump rope. So now I jump rope. <laughs> I like to play racquetball. So now I play racquetball. Yeah. Find something that you love. It will help you be a better person and it will help you be a better sister. I want to leave everybody with this quote. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. As always, wishing you love, light and purpose until we see each other next time. Have a good one. Bye -bye.